I now have the honour of introducing His Worship John Tory, Mayor, Mayor of Toronto. Elected Mayor in 2014, many of Mayor Tory's initiatives over the last three years have been focused on making sure Toronto remains a livable and affordable city for all. He has led council in approving three budgets that keep taxes low by encouraging city staff to find more efficient and modern ways to deliver services. Please join me in welcoming Mayor John Tory. Susan, thank you, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. And I want to uh, add to the Minister's words of thanks uh, to all of those who have been involved in getting us to today. Uh, and I want to in particular mention the two ministers who are here. Uh, I had the opportunity, I meet them all the time because they're very much involved in Toronto, both of them. Uh, but I went to see them a week or so ago and I knew there was work being done by the Lynn with the City of Toronto, for example, uh, and with a lot of people who are experienced and involved and engaged in this, uh, addressing this challenge of homelessness across the City of Toronto. And really what we discussed on that day was how much of this could we move forward right away because um, I, I think that beyond what we're going to do as councillors, and I'm going to single out my colleagues here in a moment, but beyond what we're going to do as councillors based on a, a proposal that's going to the City Council next week, um, there are things that need to be done to augment uh, the shelter system and, and this initiative today in particular to bring health care services into the shelters was something that has been worked on, but we needed to move it forward and actually begin to deploy it and actually provide those uh, health care services to people uh, in the shelters. Uh, I visited, I don't know how many since the beginning of this winter, but was most recently was at the shelter in Scarborough on Sunday. And again, without exception, when I've made these visits, um, people will tell me about their health care issues, many of which, and, and I think it's a wonderful thing that now people are prepared to talk about their mental health, health issues in a very open way, including with people like me who are strangers to them in relative terms. But they will say that when they're in the shelters, um, that they, they're not having access to the kind of support that they need. And it makes it virtually impossible for them to contemplate uh, moving to housing that is not in a shelter because they need uh, that support. So this is a start to have mental and physical health uh, needs met uh, in the shelters. And so I want to say thank you to all those involved getting us here, but in particular, uh, the Government of Ontario. The Government of Ontario, um, I say to people, and, and that includes Arthur Potts and all the people up to and including the Premier, have been good partners for Toronto. We haven't got done all the things we want to get done together, but we have made progress on transit, on housing, uh, and we're now making some progress on uh, homelessness. Uh, I should say in the context of my uh, two colleagues who are here, they in particular here uh, have been people who've shown leadership. In the case of Councillor Paula Fletcher, um, she's shown, shown leadership on a sort of system-wide basis and has been uh, someone at the City Council uh, who has been uh, a champion of, of us trying to do as much as we can and more than we're doing uh, in this area. And in the case of Mary Margaret McMahon, um, she was a champion here. Um, and, and, and proudly stood up and said uh, something that often needs to be said when there are people who are uncertain about uh, places like this, the New Hope Shelter, and what a great name um, for a shelter, the New Hope Shelter. But she uh, stood up there as a, as a solid local representative will do and made sure this happened. Uh, and of course it couldn't have happened, so I commend her for that too because she's been um, just excellent in that regard and, and uh, it certainly uh, makes it easier for all of us to provide the services we need to provide to people who are among the most vulnerable. And I want to just put in a word while we're saying thank you to the Salvation Army. Um, I had the privilege, it was an absolute privilege and always is to be a volunteer, but I was on the Toronto board for 10 or 15, to at least probably a dozen years, and a more compassionate uh, you know, group that does such amazing work in such a wide variety of areas you will not find, I think, as you know. Uh, but here we are at the New Hope Shelter, and of course we have them uh, operating, at, as, as is the case with many of our shelters, and there are no people who do a more caring or competent uh, job in the Salvation Army, and we've got it open, and uh, I have such confidence when I know that they're running it, uh, uh, because they do uh, good work and because they're such caring people. So uh, we're working together uh, to develop uh, solutions to what is a very complex problem. If there's anything that I've had to learn about in my short time uh, as the mayor, it is the complexity of this issue. It's complex and we're trying to simplify this part by having the Lynn and the city and, and others work together um, because it's complex from government, uh, from a government perspective, but it's also incredibly complex from a human standpoint. I mean, the one thing that I do know from my visits to the shelter and from the statistics, but there's nothing like talking to people, is the number of people, for example, who are suffering from mental illness and addiction related issues who are in our shelters and quite frankly that's not the best place for them to say the least 
uh, but they're there and they have talked about the fact that they can't get the care. A man I met at Peter Street, where we do our housing referrals, uh, said to me that he said, well, he does see a psychiatrist once a month. And I said, well, is that adequate? And I was asking him as the person in this case that was the patient. And he said, well, of course not. Uh, but he was thankful for that. But I think we've sort of learned at the, at the Scarborough shelter, they said a doctor comes in, I think it's once a week. Uh, and, and this is going to improve upon that substantially and make sure that on a, con I'll call it a continuous basis, but a much more continuous basis, that people are able to have their health care needs, whether they be mental or physical health, addressed by a professional uh, person. Um, and I think that is going to lead to dramatically improved outcomes for those people, most importantly. But I think it will help us in our efforts to have the system run better and fairer and more uh, compassionately uh, for people. Uh, I want to say thank you, as others have done, uh, even those who are not involved in the city government, to the Provincial Minister of Health was kind enough to thank our city staff, because they too have been working uh, with all of the agencies, some of whom are represented here today, and with uh, the Salvation Army and with uh, the provincial government to make sure that these kinds of steps forward uh, can take place and that we can get a new shelter like this up and running, which has been done. And it doesn't represent any more than any other step, including the one we're here to celebrate today, a solution to this problem, but they all represent positive uh, steps forward. And I think that that is something that we have to, uh, have to focus on. We've had for the first time this winter, seven winter respite centers open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We've had outreach teams uh, that largely consist of city staff who've been, uh, who've been out on the streets in, in uh, increased numbers supplemented by paramedic uh, teams who have done that as well to make sure that the people who are on the streets and often can't be convinced for a variety of reasons to come in, even to the shelter system, uh, are, are cared for and are looked after and looked over uh, by these people. But there's no question that the system is under strain. Um, it, it is a hard thing to understand, or, and, and you can't even find anybody who will offer an explanation. And we know from looking at the current shelter population, there are many contributing factors um, to the fact that the system is under such a strain at the moment. Uh, and there is no question that one of those is uh, the influx of refugees. And I'm confident and was a big supporter and continue to be a big supporter of our open hearts and open minds and open arms and when it comes to people who are struggling uh, in other countries. And and I also am confident of the fact that we can integrate those people as well as we have done in, in, in past instances where refugees have come to our shores. And today, uh, they're hugely contributing citizens and a blessing uh, for our country. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that we have more work to do in making sure those people can get integrated faster because a great many of them are resident in the shelter system where it's not good for them and it's obviously not, uh, it is c contributing to the strain the system is facing. I've mentioned, as have all of the uh, speakers so far, mental health and addiction. And there are many people suffering from those uh, two things that are in the shelter system. And that is not the best place for them. And that is why I'm particularly delighted as well in hearing the minister announce today the additional support of housing units, because this too uh, is a step forward. Uh, but I think in describing the situation as it relates to mental health in the City of Toronto as a crisis, and that is not a word, uh, notwithstanding sometimes politicians will use that word and throw it around uh, to describe any situation, I don't. But I do think the overall situation we face with mental health um, is a crisis. I think it's a crisis because what, ha what has happened today is that we know of more people that are suffering from mental health issues and addiction issues because they're prepared to come forward. And thank goodness for that. But at the same time, by having them come forward and say, I have an issue, and acknowledge they have an issue, it places a greater burden on us uh, to deal with it together. And I'm looking forward to continuing to deal with the principally the province, but also the federal government and ourselves uh, to make sure that we can do even more than the 294 units and more than taking the health care uh, uh, resources into the uh, shelter system. Uh, we are justifiably proud of our health care system. As the minister said, it's one of the best in the world. Whatever its shortcomings are, it's still among the best in the world, if not the best. Uh, but I think we have to do in terms of addressing uh, needs that emerge in front of our eyes perhaps more forthrightly than was the case uh, in the past. So I think today is a breakthrough. I think that it is going to make uh, services available at least for a start in these shelters that are newer and I think we're going to find that is such a success in terms of doing the most important thing the minister mentioned which is um, contributing to the lives and well-being of the people uh, who are uh, being treated in the shelters for many of the kinds of things he described but also I think it's going to do uh, a lot to help us with the uh, f good functioning of the shelter system. And I think that it will be such a success that we will move uh, fairly rapidly to expand this kind of program. And I'll certainly be, um, you know, while watching to see how it works, making sure that we move to that uh, situation as fast as possible. 
It's just a start today, but I want to acknowledge that I think this government and all the people involved have been listening, not just to me and not just to others who have been advocating, some of whom are here, but also to people with lived experience. And I think that uh, is something that should be acknowledged uh, when it is done uh, by governments or by anybody else, to listen to the people who uh, have the lived experience. I think this is going to make a real difference in the lives of people, and it's going to take us one more step forward to where we really want to end up, which is the same place the minister said we want to end up, which is to eradicate uh, homelessness and to make sure that those people are given the chair, fair chance to live a full and productive and healthy uh, life uh, as other people have the opportunity to do. And so that is why I'm here to, to commend the Government of Ontario for today uh, and for many of the other things they're doing in partnership with us to make sure that we can better care especially for uh, our most vulnerable citizens. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Torre, for those uh, inspiring remarks. I did want to just uh, comment that a strong partnership with the city has been critical to the success of the Toronto Central Lynn and its goal to help advance the health and well-being for everyone who works and lives in Toronto. So I also want to add my thanks uh, to Mayor Torre and the staff from the city who have done so much to help support the Lynn and provide better access to city services for the citizens of Toronto. Minister and uh, the mayor will now take questions. Ministers. Ministers. And councillors. And, <laughs> and Alex. <laughs> Well, hearing none, I guess we'll yeah. have to minute, minute, Could someone tell us how much uh, of, of a budget that we're talking about for the pilot and what it would then cost to roll it out to all the city shelters? Do we have a, a dollar figure? It might be Susan. You might be the best to answer that one, actually. <laughs> So, um, while well, Susan is uh, looking into that, uh, we're going to make sure that we get this right. So, uh, um, we're uh, beginning with these five uh, shelters, uh, these five new shelters. Um, it is. Uh, it gives us the opportunity because we're working with all of the partners that can advise us and help us and work with us and us working with them to make sure that we're providing the right supports whether that's physical or mental and also those connections right it's not just about sort of in-house shelter support it's about creating the connections for ongoing support and broadly in terms of looking at social determinants uh, so we're committed to making sure that we invest the money that's required to get the job done and, and in terms of uh, these five shelters, this is the beginning, right? And I think uh, as we roll it out, that we'll be learning important lessons uh, with our partners on how uh, we can be most impactful, and that will provide us with the, uh, the sound advice that we need as we, we continue to roll out.